We're actually filming up north, so it's a change of scenery. Change. My ass is already on fire as it is, so. The last thing that doesn't need to catch on fire is your wig. Basically, last year I was diagnosed with uh, stage four follicular lymphoma. It's a incurable type of cancer. I have basically a life expectancy of 15. So let's just kind of get into dating. Yeah. How has it been? I'm uh, I'm on Hinge. Your bio should literally be looking for someone to take my last breath. <laughs> I'm dying. Like, wait, sorry, I am, but also I am. Did you let him know you had cancer before the first date? How can you break up with someone over something that they can't control? I can't change that part of me. It's not like, oh, um, you're a bitch or you're this or you're talk. I cannot go and fix this. I start point, why wasn't it enough? You're listening to the X Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to the X podcast. I'm your host and your host every single Monday, Alessia. Before the episode starts, be sure to follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat. The episode goes out on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. So whenever you get all of that stuff done, then you can actually be blessed and watch this amazing episode that's about to happen. Okay, so do all of that and then come back. Actually, maybe don't leave. Just go do that afterwards. But be sure to hit like, comment. I love interacting with you guys. Okay, so today we have a very special guest who has been on the podcast before. When we had this special person on, so many people were like, have her back on just to kind of, you know, update everyone on where she's at with dating and with her whole cancer story. So without further ado, I'm welcoming Becca back on the pod. Hi. Are Thank you happy to be back? I'm so happy. Like, I'm so blessed to even been able to share my story and to do it a second time. Like, what are the odds? I know. So cheers. Cheers, my love. We're actually filming up north. So it's a change of scenery. Chin. Um, I love the heat. So the fire behind us is everything and more i you're dying i'm i'm dying like my ass is already on fire as it is so this is just like adding to that layer of the last thing that doesn't need to catch on fire is your wig oh frick yeah <laughs> especially this is not human so <laughs> Ooh. so for any new listeners do you want to just update everyone on who you are and kind of like give like a synopsis of what the last episode was absolutely okay um so Basically, last year I was diagnosed with uh, stage four follicular lymphoma. What that means is it's a incurable type of cancer that I will have for the rest of my days. Typically, it's for patients between 60 and 65, so I'm very rare case. And I just finished my treatments. I'm in remission, but I'll never be in a full remission. I'll have to redo chemo in the next five years and every five years after that. I have basically a life expectancy of 15, so we will uh, be fighting the good fight. Yes. Yes. Okay, so the last time you came on the podcast, yeah, the news was very recent. So recent. And also our friendship, I feel Absolutely. like, has definitely evolved yeah. um, after, oh, after sure. the podcast. Do you ever feel like when you meet someone... And you connect with them. They don't want to get close with you because they're kind of like, okay, well, I don't want to like get close and get hurt by someone who I know is technically at some point going to pass away. I have definitely felt that for sure. I've not so much in my friendships because I've been able to kind of solidify them in a mm -hmm. way and kind of eliminate the ones that are not good for me and have not been there. Yeah. But dating is another thing, like whole other realm. I 
can't even tell you how difficult it's yeah. been. Yeah. So the last episode, we were talking about how you were just starting to put yourself out yeah. there in the dating stage. You were like, oh, yeah. if I'm having sex with him and like he pulls on my wig, like what do I do? So let's just get into it. Let's Absolutely. Just let's get into do it. it. Oh so my God, yes. You leave the podcast and you're like, I'm putting myself out there. I'm dating. It's been, I think you said 10 years you weren't dating. Five years? Five years. Five, Five years. years. No one was touching my cookie. Like no action. It was desert storm down there <laughs> nothing was happening so I was finally like let's go you're like I don't have time to waste absolutely not and I was feeling amazing I've had like the best year of my life I feel I have cancer but I'm feeling like let's get out there let me like live my life to the fullest super um we could say I was like really uh what's the word like delusional maybe I love I love anyone who's delusional. A little, Live like, in your delusion, a baby girl. Ignorant, also, okay. you know, like God, Becca, you're such a little baby. Like I look back now and I'm like, oh, if only you knew. <laughs> you're yeah. like the guys I was like sad about who canceled on me on dates are now like pause. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Except yeah. for one. Except for one. Okay, so let's just kind of get into dating. Yeah. How has it been? Are you on any apps? I'm a sponsored baby, duh. <laughs> Hey guys, my sponsor for today is Rudsack. Rudsack is a luxury brand using high quality materials. I'm wearing their Divina bodysuit right now and I'm obsessed. We're actually filming up north. So this is the perfect winter fit under a jacket and you damn know that Rudsack makes the best winter coats. They are a Montreal brand, but they are sold everywhere in the world and it's just the details everywhere. With the Divina bodysuit, you can see how the thumb holes are perfect for keeping everything in place. I'm wearing the black one in extra small and I do have a discount code for you. The discount code is the X podcast at checkout for 20% off if you're from the US and 10% off if you're Canadian. Bye. I'm uh, I'm on Hinge. Okay. Um, it, it's been it's been a, a whirlwind. It's definitely a lot has happened. Um, your bio should literally be looking for someone to take my last breath. <laughs> I'm dying. Like, wait, sorry. I am, but also I am dying. <laughs> um, actually, that is like stellar. So then when they're like, uh, why didn't you tell me you had cancer and I can decide if I want to, you know, pursue you. You're like, it was in my bio. Yeah, like, sorry, did sir. Did you read? Like, like I'm sorry. <laughs> read between the lines, loser. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so no. you're on Tinder. No, Hinge. Hinge, hinge, hinge sorry, hinge, sorry, hinge. sorry. Um, and this summer, I met this amazing person. Okay. Once in a lifetime connection. Did not see it coming. Um, I think when we're younger, we always think we're going to just meet these people and we're going to feel these like crazy feelings. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, we dated for six weeks. We Our first date was at McKibben's. It was great did you let him know you had cancer before the first date no I was still in the like I just want you to treat me like any other girl like everything is hunky-dory I'm not telling anybody at this point so um okay so you yeah. go on your first date yeah. it's amazing it's amazing we're talking the whole night I go to the bathroom he pays the bill I'm like boss move like yes. loving it um we're talking on the phone like every day. I'm like, holy crap, everything's moving so fast. Yeah. Second date, he's already like, I don't know about you, but like I'm ready to like delete hinge. Like, and I'm like, I'm right there with you. Wow. I was feeling all the feels. Like that must be so difficult though to have to feel like you met someone and you have this kind of like secret you're hiding from someone I, where you're like in in a perfect world before my cancer like you would just be like I'm in and this is it but like having having that fear of knowing that you might have met the love of your life but he might still walk away when you both know how you feel is like crazy especially like at the beginning um I'll play you guys like a sorry a little voice recording because I had been going on dates before, but I never felt like I need to tell any of these guys. But with him, I like second, third day, I'm already feeling like I, I want to tell you. Cause I'm like, it, it was just unbelievable what I was feeling. Like I've never felt like this before. And so and it was just, just easy. You guys were hanging out often. It was so simple. I never questioned 
anything. Like wow. I was like, was not rereading texts. I was not like questioning anything. He was, it was just like, okay. so here we go. Let me see. I'm legit freaking out about that. Cause like I told you guys before, like I've never wanted to tell someone so bad because like he's so serious and he's like there's no there's no game like he really wants to find a partner he like is doing all the right things to ensure that like we're like we're getting to the point of being serious you know and that terrifies me because i i want to tell him i don't want to trick him or dupe him or waste his time but i also want to enjoy it and so I'm really conflicted about it all because I I think I'll tell him sooner than later, but like, I'm not, I, to me, we only have two dates. Friday will be three. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know what to do, but I just, it's definitely like, I won't tell him for sure. Like Friday, like it'll be, I think I'll know when the time's right. So just to oh like, my God. I know yeah. just to preface, it was so quick and I did swipe yes on him wanting children. And first day I kind of asked him, I'm like, look, would you, how do you feel if like your partner down the line could not have kids? I'm like, kind of like not really. Yeah. And he said, well, I would pick my partner. And I was like, okay, you know, like I'm not wasting his time. This guy's so serious. Like we want the same things. We're getting along so well. Um, it was just like whirlwind. Like I was like, and I, I have to say, I don't think I was delusional in the way that I was feeling because I, I was there. I saw the mm -hmm. way he looked at me. Like, other people saw it. Like, we would be at a grocery store and, like, he can't keep his hands off me. And, like, I was like, oh, fuck, I missed that, you know? Yeah. Like, and um, anyways, it, it comes down to he really wanted kids. And I'm already, like, I don't, it wasn't even, like, okay, I want kids because I want to keep him. It was literally, like, I saw the whole picture with him. Like, I was like, you know what? Like, I see it going the whole distance. Like, it was just so magical to me. And I'm already, like, asking my doctor, like, can we get, like, fertility? Like, I'm already asking friends. I have friends who are like, I would be a surrogate. Like, it was um, already, like, we're only, like, talking six weeks here. But it was, like, the connection to me was so strong that I'm, like... When you know, you know. When you know, you know. And... I, I just figured this guy would be in my life no matter what way as a friend, as ho like, of course I was hoping for more, but like in the end, when I told him, um, cause it, I, I couldn't, I like, it just, yeah. I was like, it was just like, okay, I'm like, this is torture for me. It's torture for him. Like he knows something's up. Um, he's already like, oh whatever i'm just yeah so i basically he he broke up with me over not being able to have kids and it being very difficult and it was just the hardest thing i've went through this year and i kind of like you know what's crazy is that before you had met him you said you didn't want kids and then you Which meet is, him and then all of a sudden you do and it's because i think when you find the right partner then you're like to create a human that would be a version of me and him sounds amazing. And before you were probably not able to picture it with anyone else. So now that you found someone. And that brings me to like a whole other question. Cause now I'm, I'm so confused now. Like, Whoa, like I was so steadfast in like how I felt what I was feeling. And now I'm like, wow, someone made me feel that way in such a short amount of time. And it's scary. It's scary to think like that could, I, I just, I don't know how to feel right now about it all. And I'm just kind of like taking it all in, taking it all in. And cause you don't want to meet somebody else. Like for you, you found him. So it's like, but he's, but he's not for me though. Cause the person who mm -hmm. is for me at the end of the day is going to pick me. And yeah. yeah. And I like, I was kind of telling you like before I'm like, you know i was like i i will always say he was the greatest guy he's probably gonna watch the podcast i know if i were to ever call him i know he would pick up the phone i know he would come because that's just how great he is mm -hmm. and i still think the world of him 
But at the same time, I have to also think, how can you break up with someone over something that they can't control? I can't change that part of me. It's not like, oh, um, you're a bitch or you're this or you're talk. I cannot go and fix this. I did. I got, I got chemo. And I was willing to try like maybe different things, but like at a certain point, why wasn't it enough? And it's just been very difficult, even post him, post dating him. Whew. Um, I, I, sorry, I, I, I'm very, um, I love my friends. I'm always sending like voice memos. I'm just trying to like keep in touch with them. And, um, this was the day we broke up and I'm sorry if I sound like a goat. Oops. Oh boy, here we go. So, um, he just left. Um, I knew he was going to break up with me today. He said he was popping by and I just fucking knew it. I had a feeling and, uh, he came over. He was, he's just the sweetest guy ever. And he's just explained, he's like, look, I'm really looking for a family and I really want someone who's going to be around. And, he was fucking crying the whole time I was crying and he's so sorry and he just like god he's the fucking sweetest guy ever and he was just like very like loving and everything about it and he was just like the fucking best and I don't know I told him everything's like you know I don't know I'm just really upset about everything and um we had breakup sex but it was so good but whatever it's just it was very very difficult yeah Whew. so i i knew i cheers cheers you need a second yep. i need a second I <laughs> Sorry. so post that um just a preface i'm not expecting to ever like not that i'm never gonna feel that way i just like don't think, think you don't have a chance just because that happened. It happened. I've made my peace with it. Yeah. And I've had to move on. Look, no love is ever going to be the same. No. You know, sometimes somebody else is going to come into your life and show you a different type of love. Absolutely. And as much as you thought that was the only picture you can see, you'll see it with somebody else. I, I truly think like you're going to find your person. I'm not worried. I know that you are very much like on this time clock of being like, I'm here for a certain amount of time, like, and you're kind of putting urgency on it. And I think that's, that's the scary thing I see with you is that, and I get it. I'm, I can't even be here and tell you, Becca, this is not going to be an episode where I'm going to give you advice. Right. I have no idea what you're going through. I'm just like, I'm here. I'm your friend. I'm feeling for you. And I just think that you know, I know we have different views on like everything happens for a reason yeah. and I can understand how for you it's completely different because right. of the cards you've been handed. Right. Um, and I don't let that necessarily like rule my life that in that way. But like I've had a hard time. Like I just I don't I don't understand it personally. Like for me, it's just not applicable to my life. But and I get that. It's just I've had like, first, like why do why do bad things happen to good people? They just happened. It's just, I, but you know what I think? The worst things happen to the people who can deal with it. Absolutely. And I'm not saying that, no, I like, believe that it was given to you because you can handle it, but no, I do believe that. <sighs> yeah, I know. I would kind of like, you know, instead of this like trial and tribulation package, I'd kind of like the blessings package in the new year. That's yeah. kind of what I'm hoping for myself. Yeah. Well, blessings on blessings, you know, yeah. like have, have you, have you ever thought about dating someone who also is like has cancer like a little fault in my stars what's the movie called fault in our stars yeah, fault in my stars yeah you know like a little fault in our stars kind of movie ending where maybe you'll have even a deeper connection with somebody who's going through a similar thing maybe not exactly go for someone who just understands you in a way where they're at that at your stage right. they want to live life to their fullest and I know the way you see it, you're like, I don't feel ill, so I don't want somebody who's mad about their life and is just going to like not 
have that same energy. But I think from what I see from you is that ever since you found out the news, all you've been wanting to do is live life, yeah. do things, be with friends. So don't you think that if you met somebody who was also going through the same thing, they would have that same energy. So you would have a bond that's like unexplainable. I think it would be even more powerful than how you felt with. It's honestly like I'm open to anything like I've, I've had to be. And honestly, that's a little bit why I have had the best year of my life is because I've said yes yeah. so much more. I would be open to it, but it's like you said, they would have to, in a way, be like me in the sense of like, okay, I'm not, I have not always been positive. I, at the moment, I'm like not at all at the same place I was six months ago, yeah. but they would, if you were to play your cancer card and that's your personality and you make it your life, I have a hard time with that. I have a hard time with this like victim mentality, whereas yeah. for me, I'm like, but of course I'd be open to it. Like if Is there is there any dating sites for cancer patients? Like cancer mingle? I don't know. Is that is that one? <laughs> uh, if not, we gotta create uh, it. We gotta make one. Um I I don't know. I mean I don't know if that's something I would do though. Like uh, like all cancer patients. I don't know. Yeah. But I'd be open to it. Like can't say no. If you say no, you you're or I on think I think going forward you need to be a lot more intentional with dating. So I feel like at the beginning you were like, I'm meeting someone. Do I let them know they have cancer? Okay. So you started with not telling people you had cancer. Then after what happened with, I was like, never again, never again. Never You're like, again. this Am is, I gonna, oh yeah. So do you um, want to explain that? A little bit, but just to like backtrack. Yeah. I am so much more intentional in my dating now because, and you're hating me for this, but like I've had such a rough go the last couple months that I kind of gave myself a and you're gonna hate me but like I gave myself a deadline of um October of this year is when I'm gonna kind of call it like I'm not gonna per keep pursuing dating I'm not I'm just gonna kind of call it just because from my own peace of mind like I have to and from my own heart because truthfully like I can't our dating right now is not sustainable. Like for me, like just for a regular person, but I had like, okay, a fucking sickness that is incurable, whatever. Like how am I supposed to go out there and put myself out there time and time again? And okay, we get ghosted, we get rejected, of course. But like add this, like, yes, okay. I have a deadline for my next chemo. It's in five years, but I also like, I have to call it quits for me like for my peace of mind and people might be like oh my god like you're just gonna take anything and you're gonna be desperate I am not desperate no. I literally five years nothing was touching Niagara Falls okay mm -hmm. like nothing yeah I can go another five years but my heart can't I'm such a little lover girl I'm such a heart on my sleeve like I give so much you know what I think I sorry no I and I just think like I'm very easily lovable. So I'm kind of like, and I think when you first started, when you first came on the podcast, you were just more like, I want to have sex. I want to, I was just, I want to yeah. remove the bats down there. Cause it's been so long. Yeah. Absolutely. And now after finding a connection with that last person, Mister, yeah, Mister. Now I think you're realizing that you don't want to just be a fuck to someone. You want to meet someone to spend the rest of your next years with. And people, and you know what? that might be so sad to someone like oh like that's what you're wishing for yourself like in your last year no. in a way i've had to i've had to redefine what success is to me like of course i've had goals before of course like you know i always wanted to build a house with a like i've always wanted to like have this saving savings and like you know i was god i was like trying to work for my future but like for now how i'm feeling now like success to me and it, I kind of was talking about in the first episode, it's the smallest things. It's literally having friends that love me, a family that loves me, a home above my, like, above my head. And honestly, and it always gets me so emotional. For me, take your time. My goal, what I'm working forward, and yes, I'm giving it till October, whatever. I want to be in a committed relationship, a happy relationship. And that might be really sad to someone, but in my case, no, it's not. It's, it's not. literally, 
if I were to go tomorrow and that did not happen for me, I would consider not my life a failure, but I would consider it literally like I didn't do what I, I didn't have what I want. I would feel incomplete if I were to go. I, I totally, totally understand how you feel. Um, just, oh, it's so hard. It's so hard being the interviewer right now because I don't, I don't know what to say back. I, I don't, don't even know. What I to don't say. know what to say. But what I will say is that the one thing about love is you cannot put a time on it. And I get it. Your situation is different. But the fact that you're pressuring, like, by October, if I don't meet my love, like, I'm done. And you know what? You're probably going to meet your love the second you say you're done. Because love doesn't come when we're chasing it. It comes when we're just, like, I'm over it. I'm not looking for it. If it comes, it comes. Beautiful. Right. Um, but I also get, on the other hand, like, look, I don't have much time left. Mm -hmm. So, like, I want him yesterday. Yeah. I want him yesterday. Like, so literally, any, like, everything is out the box for me. Like, literally, if... I were to meet someone and they're like, hey, I feel like kind of getting married next year. Why not? You know, I, I, hey, I feel like going to Vegas and getting married tomorrow. Literally, let's go. If, if that's what they let's do it. Like if it feels right, it feels right. Like I'm not like trying to pressure anything. Like, honestly, I don't need the two year engagement and then the ring and then the this and then the dating. I'm like, hey, like, yeah, you know, I don't know. It's I'm trying to see the positive of having cancer. And one of them that I'm noticing is that. You do not take life for granted. And Never. there's so many people who don't even know they have th they, they don't have cancer and they just die instantly. Yeah. Like you almost have this like pre like you could almost decide the rest of your life right now, which is in a, in some way kind of cool, because like you're saying, some so many people work towards something and then like, boom, something happens. My dad, like like we're, my dad just like worked his whole life and then gone like it was all for nothing, you know, like so yeah. in that way. Yeah. I definitely do have to like, and that's why I have to be so intentional in my dating because I have to make it happen for myself. There is not yeah. a beautiful lumberjack man that's going to come knocking at my door. No, there's for no sure. cowboy that's going to come and like lasso me up. I totally agree. I just think the pressure of you putting on yourself like I need to find someone before October is putting more stress on you, which you really don't need right now, Beck. You really don't need. And then you're going to be finding yourself in relationships that are probably not for you because you're forcing it. And that's oh. what really, really scares me. So I think... It's like, this has nothing to do with it, but like, so it's like me going into my podcast and being like, I want this podcast to be the biggest it could, I could even imagine it to be. Yeah. Okay. And then I say, well, you know what? I'm going to do it. But you know what? If like, I don't get to the level of fame and the level of, of success I want, then after like eight months, I'm going to stop. And that's, that's the tricky thing because you don't choose when you blow up. You don't choose. No. You do everything you can in order to get there. And then when your time comes, it comes. So it's like me putting in all this work. It's like you putting in all this work in dating. And then eventually you're just like, fuck it, I'm done. Like you need to still kind of be like, okay, what's the end goal? What do I want? And like still be like open-minded to it. And, and so it's a happy medium of like, obviously it could come when you're closed off to it because you're right. not searching for it, but also still being open-minded enough to like allow it to happen for you. Like all these shitty dating stories, they're going to be so fun to talk about when you actually meet your person and you can laugh about it. I that's usually what makes, do though. But that's what makes yeah. like, it's so fun is going through all these stupid fucking frogs to find your prince. So it's like, don't give up on it because it's worse leaving this earth knowing you gave up on it than continuing and to see, uh, continuing to actually see where it could go like if I would stop my podcast now and I'd be like well fuck it it's been three and a half years I didn't get to where I wanted to that guilt of knowing like but what if it was happening for me the next day and I just gave up and I closed off and I shut off on it okay the way you're saying it like that I totally get that yeah of course if oh if only you had tried another week you could we never know we, we never like know. it's all in the hands of like you know life and universe but at the same time is your podcast like breaking your heart is your podcast using you is your pot like i have to protect my peace and right now yeah i feel so low mentally yeah and i think it's because of all these dates and all these like guys that are telling me like wow like it's happened like multiple times where these guys are like I finally feel like I'm talking to a girl who's like nerdy and likes all the same things as me. And like, oh my God, you can hold a conversation. You're funny. You're this, you're that. The second I tell them, it's like game over, game over 
or even more heartbreakingly, it turns immediately sexual. And that's been the hardest part because it's almost like, well, whatever value you might have had as a potential partner or someone I'd want to date. Now you're just the whole. Yeah, I'd still be down to smash. And that's been. Whew. And you know what, guys or whatever you can you can be like, but you're telling me we're talking like nonstop for two weeks. Like we're talk like constant like banter and it's so good and then the second i they see the podcast whatever they're like oof it, the second question they ask is so can i pull the wig and i'm like yeah where did that come from yeah like and we were not talking about that yeah. two seconds ago so i remember when you first came on the podcast you were very worried about obviously you came on to talk about cancer but yeah. you weren't addressing that you had cancer to the the guys you were meeting on what's the app hinge on hinge yeah so how has that been like because i know now you're kind of just like this is my story which i love that for you yeah. just not hiding it anymore no. like just being like look this is what i have like if you're if you're down for the it's it's honestly similar a little bit to me in the sense where like I'll meet a guy. They'll go on my Instagram. They'll see my podcast. Okay. Right. You know what you're getting involved with. A thousand percent. You know, like you do something fucked up. You're going to be talked about. You don't do something fucked up. You're still going to be talked about. They know what you're like. It's like you're getting to know me. You know my personality. Mm -hmm. So if you're still down after that, I'm like respect you like something about me after me being completely myself of course where i feel like when they listen to you on the podcast i know it's new to you but people watch and then if they still stick around you're kind of like okay you dig me yeah yeah thousand percent could we talk about the wig situation absolutely pillow princess okay so the last time you came on the podcast you were saying that you were talking to a guy and you were very worried because you were gonna have sex with him if he were to like pull your wig off while you were having sex because this was going to be the first time yeah and what's the update with that all right everybody wants to know like literally everybody was like Becca (laughs) come on now um so first time I had sex uh was with mister who did not know I had cancer so I'm like fuck you know we're having sex so we did it like four times the first time we had sex. Jesus, we're worried about the wig and you're just having sex four times. Energizer bunny, okay? <laughs> I'm like, this guy like got me feeling like, come take a ride on Splash Mountain, baby. <laughs> like, Niagara Falls is open for business. Let's go. <laughs> um, doesn't notice anything. Halfway through, like after the second time, he's like, can I ask you a question? And I'm like, shoot. He's like... But he didn't try yanking it the first and second no, time. No. No, because he's like, can I ask you a question? I'm like, go ahead. He's like, I've noticed that you were like dominating. Like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm thinking about Veronica. She was like, you know, just take control. (laughs) I'm like, yes, love it. Bad bitch vibes. And I'm like, okay, I already have this script in my mind. Um, Oh yeah. I'm just like, I don't like my head touch. I'm just very sensitive. Trying to brush it off. Right. Like, let's talk about something else. Yeah. Then he looks at me deadpan and he's like, is it a wig? You're like, I was prepared for this, but I also wasn't. I was like, you weren't expecting it. No. And I didn't say anything. I just kind of like changed the subject. But like, of course, that's an answer in itself. Like, if you don't say anything, that is the answer. But this man was so good. He never. Wait, what did you say when he said that? I didn't. I changed the subject. A thousand percent. So you just spoke about something else. Oh, yeah. I was like, so. So he caught the vibe of like, I can't ask her that clearly like. Yeah, but he never he never revisited it after. Right. He just was so respectful that he never like she'll tell me when she wants to tell me. Right. Right. And any other time I've had like a little cookie action since then, they've known. So they just they're always like, oh, man, that's my favorite. I'm like, yeah, that used to be my favorite too. the hair. Oh, pulling. fuck off that they're saying that. No, but I get it, though. I used to love getting my hair pulled like, hello. You know, what's so weird. I don't, it's not something that like really happens for me often. Like in my like <laughs> it's not something that like I'm hooking up with some of the first three times. I'm like, they're going to yank my hair like, OK, maybe a little, but not like but oh, it it's was- not like part of sex for me. But for me, it was the f- it was the fear of it might happen. Right, so right, I right. Need to compl- tell- yeah. I need to either like not dominate, but I need to yeah. like assert the situation like don't touch my hair. So every single person you've hooked up after that, they've known that you had a wig on. They've known. And can I just say, just preface by saying pillow princess does not work with a wig at all. 
at all. At what all. are we from Jersey? Absolutely. <laughs> We're watching a little Sopranos. Um, at all. At all. With a wig, like it moves up and like. So pillow is not working. Pillow princess. We are work. taking it from the like we're doing just. So what are we doing? Like cowgirl, of course. Yeehaw, motherfucker. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, just doggy and whatever else. Works. Yeah. 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 But I feel like now your hair has grown since yes. like when you started dating. So now I feel like even if it came on off, it's not a shock. And can I just say you have the most beautiful beautiful head like i could just picture me with no hair i look like an egg and like could you agree you have a beautiful bald I do. head i do i i do agree I'm, you have no bumps like it's literally guys a perfect bald head i literally right now it's very um it's pixie cut i'm looking very uh, yeah would you feel comfortable showing it or no if they made me feel comfortable if they made me feel like i could be myself and like hey like if you don't yeah. want to wear it like Chill, you know don't don't worry about it like you're yeah. gonna be, be if you make me f for me and that's like my biggest green flag and something i've had a lot of issues in my past relationships if you make me feel wanted and like you like me and you think i i will do anything for you like i will melt like i am you just make me feel like you're you want me mm -hmm. i'm gucci we're good let's go so for me it's like if you make me feel like like this it's a safe space yeah why wouldn't i fucking take my wig off a hundred percent everybody keeps telling me how sexy i am without my wig honestly everybody. it's giving like orange is the new black vibe of like girl with like like you're missing tats and you're just like the baddest bitch am i missing tats though no you don't need them so we were up north like a, a month ago yeah and we were just getting drunk and you were saying like alessia you're gonna be shocked to hear this you're like, I don't even know what no, you're no, about to I'm say. No, no, I'm like, it. honey, I was drunk, obviously. I just thought about it uh -oh, now. That's yeah. why. Um, you were saying how you never came before. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. No, okay. no, because wait, wait. I'm scared. All the guys are going to be like, I can make you calm. It's the first thing they but say. You know what? Fuck it. Let them. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my God. My poor mom has to watch this. So, no. yeah. Um, <laughs> you're like, mom, tune off. Uh, well, I mean, point. whatever. I'm a woman. Like, what do yeah. you expect? Um, yeah, no, I've never. So you've enjoyed sex before, but you've never, never come through sex or oral or masturbation. I've never, I've never had okay. an orgasm. And honestly, we could, we could go through it. But like, honestly, I know it's like a mental block. Like, I know it's a, like, okay. When, when did you start masturbating? How old were you around? Like 14, 15. Did you get a vibrator? No. Okay. So it was no. just more with like your, your hand. Yeah um okay and then when you got into your long-term relationship you mm -hmm. would just be like i came and you would just kind of lie yeah my first relationship we were long distance he was in the army like i thought we were gonna get married like we were together for four years but yeah it was definitely like okay. is this it, i i felt like is this what it's supposed to feel like i'm like everybody kept saying they're coming and they're like, like yeah oh, if you come you'll know you'll when know you and i'm like maybe i was like maybe it happened no How so then it hasn't happened exactly and that's like what everybody's been saying they're like no no you know and i'm like listen becca and if you don't come before you die this is my this is my this is the roman empire this is this literally is roman i'm empire. sorry you're there looking for love i'm like no no no, no. we're we looking need for <laughs> chasing an orgasm we're literally chasing an orgasm before we're chasing love but yeah. i truly think when you like really get there with a partner and you c open up completely i think you might get there i think so too you know truthfully but i think that yeah. coming starts a hundred percent from the mind and yes. it starts yeah. with you having for to figure your yes for, for a, a woman, woman it yeah. comes yes and i think it's only gonna happen if you like make it a project where like you're like i will keep masturbating by myself get a vibrator try with your hand i just sorry i just ordered um it's like a clit sucker 2000 thing. <laughs> okay um i don't know what it's called but like my my friend sarah she was like people who've never had orgasms are like like they will die on this cliff so i'm like i just ordered it it'll come in the mail in okay. 10 days i'll let you know okay perfect it'll yeah come we, need, in the we mail. need an update i'm gonna let you know you're gonna be the first guest that's come on three times uh <laughs> just because like i want the update i'm oh, sorry yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and the exes want the update hopefully i come three times <laughs> Oh my God. And like, you've <laughs> never felt like you've got that. Like, it's just like wild to me that I'm like, we need to make this happen. Every for guy you. is always like, why can you go like four or five? And I'm like, 
because I'm never feeling relief. <laughs> like I'm never there. Like yeah, it definitely has to do with you being in your head. It's a thousand. Per- I know. But it what is. I think is crazy is that when you've been dating your ex for four years, yeah, you're not in your head at that point too. Still, when you're having sex, or are you? Like, aren't you more? <sighs> Honestly, it was so long ago. Were like, you more relaxed though? Okay. Well, first, I've only had two boyfriends. Right. And they were both long term. So no, I'm just trying to think like yeah, yeah. long term after a while, like having sex, it would become like you would. I know at the beginning, we're always like trying to arch our back the best and be the hottest. But, but my first boyfriend, I lost my virginity too. So like I did not, I was not good at sex. I wasn't right, right, like, right. second one, honestly, like I lost like my libido with him because just relationship stuff and like nothing for him. But it was just like. Now I feel like I'm so much more confident in my body. I'm confident in how I am. Like, yeah, like I know what to do. You know, it's coming. It's, it's coming. Com- it's well, it's- guys. Ooh, next episode. It's going to be me uh, outside of the door with Becca using the vibrator You're and just- being like, Becca, how's it going? Is it coming? The- <laughs> She's going to be like, well, I can't come if you're fucking by the door with a microphone. <laughs> It, it could just could be a you magic imagine wand we did like an mics. experiment i'm like Ooh. here's the vibrator go in the bathroom i'll wait here <laughs> <laughs> i love that i uh, did just know guys are gonna be like oh i'll make you come you know what listen make it let's go um but the thing with that what i'll make you come is I don't believe in that because it's like They'll even when a guy chase, says, oh, no, I'll no. be good. I'll make it. We all know as a woman to come, it comes from the mind for yeah. a woman to come. It's all in the mind. So a guy saying, I'll make you come. If you haven't figured out how to make yourself come, it's not going to be doable. No, of course not. Of course yeah. not. And I know it like, of course, yeah. if I can't you know, make- you need to like know your body 1000 and then like, and then like come. show him the way. Yeah. But I'm sorry. You're not leaving this earth without learning how to come. I, uh, f- I'm sorry. Uh, I, I will fucking put you in courses. I'm, I don't know look, what to I'm, do. I'm doing the steps. You know, I yes. got some toys like, you know, I can't wait to, you have to let me know. What I'll let you know. The toys. Uh, um, I'll send you, I'll send you a card. <laughs> a I'll, send quad. You, I'll send you a card. I thought you were going to be like, I'll send you a video. I came by BJ. Love you. Like, ciao. So obviously in this time you've been dating mm-hmm. and I know you have some crazy stories oh my God. and there was some that I was like, yo, what the fuck? Save this for the podcast. I there. Yeah, there's yeah. I'm telling you, there's some crazy kooks out there. Oh like, my God. Um, One of my most like notable ones I'll say. So I, I was telling my friend, I was talking to this guy and we were out for dinner and I was like trying to put myself out there after Mr. I'm like, I got to distract myself. And I'm like, he seems kind of like, he always wants to know what I'm doing. Seems like a little controlling, but like that can also be a good thing. I, I love a possessive and obsessive man, but like okay. moderately. Yeah. And um, she was like, show me a picture. I show her a picture and she's like, BJ, this man has been posted on this Facebook group. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, are we dating the same man? I'm like, I've never been part of that Facebook group. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, he has been posted and he has been known to sexually assault girls. There was like 50 comments afterwards saying like, this man will try to trick you into not taking your birth control. He will try to force himself on you. Like he, red flag, red flag. Like it is not, it's not like someone is making this up. I mean, if 50 people are writing in that group chat, then there's definitely fire alarms on absolutely so i'm like oh my god had i not gone to dinner with my friend literally the day before i could have potentially been like a victim Mm -hmm. or potentially uh, like anything could have happened who freaking knows right See, i know we have like different views on like what we believe in and god and stuff but in this situation the way i really see it is like it was like god god was on your side he was protecting you like this is what i mean like everything happens for a reason like you were supposed to go to that dinner so you showed your friend that guy yeah and then she told you like he sexually assaults women and for me like i'm so happy that like she knew this and that's what makes me so happy about sites like this a part of it is like okay one girl can get super hurt by a guy and then just want to bash him in a group chat to fuck shit up for him but at the same time if there's so many women saying the same thing i'm like no i believe it i definitely think like there was some power to be because you know i could have talked about the date but maybe she would have never asked me to see his picture Mm -hmm. or like absolutely and i definitely think and looking through the messages now of you two like can you read what he was saying can you pull it up 
Uh, oh. I'm, I'm like I'm just curious like if there's anything anyone could take from here to learn what are some flags that he may be a molester or a rapist or whatever allegedly to be determined um fuck that word allegedly I know, I know. 50 people are writing it it's not allegedly Oh no, I blocked. Yeah, no, blocked. no, I blocked. Okay, blocked. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Do you remember like what he was saying? Like at the I just beginning? remember him being really honestly, I think he was he kept tr- Okay, we had we had a planned date. We had a date planned. And we were supposed to go to this restaurant. Everything was planned. Like, okay, 8 o'clock on a Friday, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He kept trying to get me to come to his house for drinks before. And I'm like, I've never met you. Ooh. And I was just like, no, no, I'm I'm trying to play it like easy, cool girl. Like, like take me out to dinner first. No, but just kind of like, no, I'm cool with our plans. Like, I'll see you at the restaurant. And then he's like, he tried again something like, oh, but I'd love to just like have you over like for a quick drink. Or like, I'm like, no. And I was just like. Ah. so rule number one when you meet somebody on a dating app make sure to never go to their house on a first date i think that's the first red flag or if you are which i don't suggest even if someone has been vetted by friends i still think that a first date should never be at someone's home because whenever you go to someone's home It's like you're walking on their territory and you don't even know if you like this person. So you don't want to piss them off in an environment where you feel excluded from the world. Absolutely. So I think it's a hundred percent. I think it's so important that you go places where, you know, you're seen out with people and you can kind of catch the vibes of somebody. Yeah. I think already as a woman, it's very scary because somebody can act so normal, even on a date already. And then you go back to their place and it's like Dexter. A thousand percent, you know, and just on the like I was added to the Facebook group and OK, there are some girls that are like, oh, there are a lot of girls who are like making up stories. I don't know. seems kind of fishy. What does that say to the guy? If I'm willing to come over to your house, I've never met you, but I'm telling you my intention is I want this to become serious. I'm looking for a partner. Mm-hmm. Like what does what image is that giving off to you? Of course not. Like, mm-hmm. that's giving, like, oh, I'm down to Netflix and chill every... No, that's not yeah. what I want. I'm not looking for, like, a hookup. I'm not looking for, like... A so si- I think, like, going forward, as soon as somebody even says that, we're out. Like, not I even... I have to be. Because yeah. I'm like, you, you don't But even, I think enough. even anyone listening, if, if, like, somebody already doesn't have, like, the emotional, emotional capacity, capacity yeah. to, like, know that, like, we're not interested. And... To be honest, like, I'm turning 30. Like, if you need to be, like, I don't know. I'm just not looking for, like, a young fuckboy thing. Like, I'm, I have to be intentional. I'm looking for a partner. Like. Yeah. Your life expectancy now is 15 years to live. Do you think that by chance in these 15 years, they might come up with a medicine or, you know, the technology might change and there might be a cure? for what you have like are you are you aware that a lot changes in 15 years i do like what's your mindset on that are you hopeful or or have you accepted that there's no way i've accepted my reality and (sighs) i know and honest to god it's like breaking like everybody's hearts about it but at the same time i don't it's like that i i I'm not so gun ho on like, I'm ready to sell everything. Not at all. I'm, we will see when we get there, but I am very much still like, I don't even know if I'll want to do it three times chemo. Like that to me is like, I went through hell and I'm just, it's, it's, you're asking the impossible of me. You're asking me to go through hell again and again and again. I'm just, I'll see when I get there. Like, I really, I really hope the best for myself. I hope I find someone. I hope I'm, God, I've had the best year with you, my friends, my family. Like, I, it's because of them that I've had this amazing year. And I can't wait to see what happens with me. Like, I am so excited for mm. a lot of things to happen for me. But at the same time, I'm realistic. I, 
you know, I have people who are sending me, oh God, I can't even get into that. You should see what people are like telling me. Uh, maybe some chamomile tea would cure your cancer. Maybe a deworming kit. Let me send you some vibrations. Maybe that will cure your cancer. And it's like, thank you. Maybe it would help. But at the same, I have to just make peace with my life. And, and at the end of the day, I have to go to bed with myself. I have to be happy. I need to be okay with what's going on. And, and how has that been? Because I think when you're alone and you have to go to sleep, that's... Do you want me to start crying? No, just oh. take a minute. I don't know. Because it's all fun when you're out, you're drinking, you're around friends, but it's really something else when you have to sit alone in your thoughts. Like I... And why... I've been out fucking partying and drink. I have, I don't remember the last day I was sober, truthfully. And my mom's going to kill me for that. I don't care. It's the truth. Um, I'm going out. I'm literally, I'm never home. Like I'm going to the gym at 1 a.m. I'm like, just, I can't sleep. I'm having nightmares. I'm a, I'm a hot mess. Like, let's be honest. I'm not feeling the same way I was six months ago. And that's normal. But at the same time, like, I... Do not want to be at home. I come home to nothing. And that's what's breaking my heart. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know. I have so much love to give. Like, I'm such a, like, you are. I just, like, it's breaking my heart. And I thought I was fine. I thought I was fine those five years that I was alone, truthfully. Like, I really did. And I'm now I'm realizing like, holy crap, it's not normal. You know, like it's not normal to go to family functions every Christmas, every Thanksgiving fucking, I'm the only, I'm always the fifth wheel, the fucking seventh, seventh, seventh wheel. Like I'm done wheeling and dealing. Like I, I, I can't do it anymore. And like people may be like, Oh, that's so fucking sad. Like, I'm sorry. It's just yeah. like, it's especially like I spent all this time, during the holidays with all my family, went to Brock, went to Ontario, Ontario, whatever, came back. And then it's like, oh my God, like. The I madness has stopped and now you're just like stopped. in your thoughts. I can't like, it's not. And honestly, even maybe in my, in my situation, but for anybody, you can die of loneliness. You, if you're a lonely person and I've been a very lonely person my entire life, but I've been really feeling it these days you will not live a successful life. And I know that having a committed relationship is the key to my survival. It will make, I'm not saying like, oh, you, you don't have any reasons to live. I have a million reasons to live. I just know that if I had that, God, like I you would, would go through chemo a million times. I would. And it's not because, oh. oh, like, wouldn't you do it for your mom? Wouldn't you do it for your friends? Of course I would. I don't want to break anybody's heart, but I have to be selfish and I've never been. And now it's my time. It's about me. It's about what I want. Yes. And this is like my fucking time. It's such a tricky, tricky kind of situation because it's so true. Like it, it is your time, but also like if your expectancy is 15 years, why would you ever want to cut your life? Up? Like just being able to be on this earth is a gift and I know it I, and I know and it. I, I would never want to see you rob a day from that but then again I understand how you feel it's like you you had said in previous podcasts like aging is a privilege a thousand percent but I also have to think about when it's my time to go I want to I don't want to be feeling sick I don't want to be feeling like I want to be feeling still good about myself feeling I don't want there to be a funeral and like there's an obituary and it's like an old picture of who I was and the person who had left is not even the person. At least you're going out hot. Well, we're going to get you that pick. It's going to be the nicest pick. Install that AC in my casket, baby, because we know where I'm going. <laughs> sizzle, sizzle. <laughs> I'm ready. Like, come on now. I'm ready to dance with the devil. I've been doing it for the last six months. Keep going. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I'm just. I, I really, really am hopeful that in these next 15 years, they are going to come out with some kind of 
some kind of cure for this and your 15 years that you think is gonna be added on and like look i don't need you to believe it but i believe it and maybe that's what i have to do in order to like cope cope maybe with all this but um i i truly believe like i believe in miracles and i think Hey, um, let's let's hope for some love in my life. And like, honestly, really recently, I've been kind of getting more into like, I bought a Bible. Okay, everyone's gonna be like, "What the hell, Alessia? This is not the you I know." I bought a Bible. I've been feeling like, I feel like at a point in my life, I was like, "Do I believe in God? Like, I don't know if I can't see Him, if I can't feel Him. Maybe I'm, I'm not, I'm not religious, but I feel like in my recent years, I've been in this recent last year, I've been. I've been just more in tune? getting more in tuned with just believing like everything happens for a reason and there's a plan and God has a plan. And yeah, I, I don't know. But you know what, honey, if that's like, no, if and I'm just if, if you're feeling stuff is happening to you, I believe it. Like, uh, who am I to say, like, you're not feeling. Yeah, like, but I just messages and things. I just think that um, I just think that there's a plan for you. And uh, don't be so... Maybe my plan is to go. No. (laughs) And you know what, though? If your plan is to go, then these next 15 years are going to be the best fucking years. Because you are living life to the fullest. Yeah. Life is my party, but I'm just the pinata. I just keep getting beaten, but I'm ready to party. Yeah, but you know what happens when the pinata breaks? Candy. Exactly. (laughs) Who doesn't like candy and chocolates? Bonjour. (laughs) (laughs) that's the best part yeah. after the piñata gets bruised and hurt so many times there's a beautiful treat, treat. at the end amen so, to that amen to that cheers, so cheers. Love i love you i love you too i'm so we're happy. dying the fucking fire's dying i love having you on because it just puts so much into perspective and like even you just leaving and being able to help one person because there's nothing on cancer and dating i there's no, i've looked have you looked so just you being yeah the kind of like person to start this and me being able to be a part of this process. One cheers to that. And also if this isn't a reminder to everyone who's listening, I don't want to start crying, but we are all living on borrowed time. We are. We are. No, it's not to cry. No, it's, it's true. It's true. It's true. So if you're feeling a certain way, if something's stressing you out, if a boyfriend is not good for you anymore, if anything in your life is affecting your peace, let it go every minute that we are on this earth we should be happy and doing things we love so with that said becca you are my favorite guest i love you so much i can't thank you i'm praying for you tonight and you are gonna meet the love of your life and you will have that happy ending i really wish it. you will thank you honey Cheers. thank you so I much love for you having so me much. i could have never done this without you without veronica first episode seriously like it's a this is a blessing like i it does not go unnoticed what you're doing here. Honestly, like you are going to go far. Like the, you. shoot for the stars because you're a fucking star kid. Seriously. I love you. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I'm sorry. You have no idea what this means to me. Seriously. Ben, no, I'm ben, serious. No, like, the, first, the first episode, I could have never fucking came out like I did. You're so strong. Like, even the way you're speaking, do you know, like, no one could do this. Sorry. My ass is so hot. (laughs) You know what else is hot? You! Sizzle, sizzle. (laughs) Guys, are my boobs too saggy like this? (laughs) I love you, Rachel. Wait, I love your hair. What the fuck? (gasps) I love your hair. Thank you. Sorry. She loves yeah, it so much. She's crying. <laughs> what did you do to your hair? You did the Dyson. It came out so nice. Oh my god. Well, Dyson. No, the cheaper <laughs> version. Do you need me to take your uh, pics? No yes. Or do you need to use no your red sack thing? Guys, wait, wait. Turn sorry. around. You have a wait. Turn around. You have a feather on your butt. Oh. Um, okay, got it. So too I saggy. need a couple things before yeah. we're done. Too saggy. Yeah. Like you should put a bra. You don't have one. Your your outfit's cute though, babe. Okay, oh wait, 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 I'm fucking sorry right now.